Hey folks, Phil Gallagher back again for Daily DNT. Um, still featuring the deck list that we started playing with last time around. Um, that has a handful of spicy one of's. Uh, we will keep this six. I am on the play. Again, like last time around, blind, I think I'm going to go ahead and throw away the swords to plowshares. If we're playing against something like Delver, we do have three things that can trade with a Delver, um, and that makes for a pretty strong start. Um, but I am tempted to throw away a Flicker Wisp here, because if my Vial gets forced or something like that, uh, my Flicker Wisps are going to lose a lot of utility. Uh, maybe let's do a quick MPG Goldfish on my opponent. We'll see what they've been playing. Remember, MTGO, totally different monster from Paper Magic. Uh, we're going to keep this. My opponent frequently plays lands, so we're going to ship away the swords to plowshares. My opponent is on lands, then having this Tomic in the opener is disgustingly good. Hmm. No, my opponent will have access to things like Caracas and Blast Zone that can go and, like, take this Tomic off the battlefield. This isn't, you know, a literal game over or anything. It's just very strong. Notably, this sucker doesn't get Punishing Fired. It's weird fetch timing from my opponent. Sure. <sighs> My opponent has a run in six. This super sucks. We can remove that draw step stop. Alright, uh, we're going to fall behind pretty quickly now. Um, so playing the I'm going to flick, flicker Mox Diamond game all day is not necessarily great. Not gonna make an attack with this mom. I think for the next three turns, I'm just gonna flicker out the tabernacle. Unless I'm given something better to do. It'll just open up more of my top decks to being good. Opponent may be thinking about crop rotationing that away. Mm, that really sucks for me. So my opponent is going to be able to recur Tabernacle and Blast Zone.
Here we'll do the age old Flicker Wisp, my Flicker Wisp dance. We'll send that Mox Diamond out, which acts as a weird Rashadden port that also makes them discard a card. Alright, so my opponent has access to Stage Depths, Tabernacle, and Blast Zone. I'm really going to be under the gun here in terms of pressure. I'm not sure that I'm going to be on the right side of this tempo equation. Oh, great, is my opponent going to have Maze of Ith on top of this? They do. Um, am I committing a third Flicker Wisp to the board? I probably need to. So we are going to Flicker Wisp, my Flicker Wisp. I go to the end step and flicker wisp my flicker wisp. Then at their end step, I'm going to flicker out their maze of if and hopefully crash in for nine damage. Um, the blast zone that's around the corner kind of scares me. So my opponent just targets the Maze of Ith. That's okay. That's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful draw. We're not going to play that out. I do not want that to get wastelanded. We're going to hopefully use that to swing for lethal on my turn. So three of my opponent's lands actually don't produce mana. Just throwing that out there. They're pretty constrained. All right, super happy to take that game down. All right, what do I want? Path seems like an upgrade over Source to Plowshares. Rest in Peace seems great. Surgical seems great. I uh, usually don't Cataclysm against lands. They're Pretty good at rebuilding. I'll probably play Council's Judgment, Palace Jailer. We'll consider these two cards just as other sort of like mid rangey swingy cards. Uh, did I have lands on my previous sideboard guide? I did not. All right. So Jitte is pretty medium. You don't want that many source of plowshares. I'll probably trim some of them. Revoker is pretty medium. It dies to Punishing Fire. It can shut off Renin Six, which is cool and all. I think I'm going to end up trimming my Thalias. I'm going to end up bringing in a decent number of non-creature spells. And unless my opponent has a bunch of non-land lands, that is like non-mana producing lands, it doesn't tend to do a lot. So this would leave me with three pieces of equipment, a lot of top end, uh, 23 creatures as of right now. Gideon kind of as an honorary creature. What if I trim those? And Mom does become considerably worse on the draw against both Ren and Six and Punishing Fire. So maybe it's actually correct with this build to do that and leave these in in respect of Renin 6. Uh, 20 creatures also means that my vials are of medium power level. But 
Flicker was vile as we saw that game is just stupid. I think I'm comfortable doing that. Note, I almost never sideboarded out Vials in the pre-Ren and Six metagame, and now I do it all the time. Um, that card is just so, so warping. Uh, we have a respectable but not amazing opening hand. The uh, Surgical Extraction obviously is quite good, but... In the Field of the Dead, okay. Sorry, the, the Surgical Extraction obviously is quite good, but Miron Crusader is sort of a B minus threat in this matchup. Uh, since it just dies to Punishing Fire. I uh, don't feel like wastelanding my opponent. I'm going to try to wasteland something like a stage or a depths and then extract that if at all possible. Uh, draw lining up pretty poorly against what my opponent has, I imagine. I obviously don't know for sure. A crop rotation, you bet. A thespian stage. Sure. Another crop rotation. Uh, that's... That's some poop. You don't play around double crop rotation. Alright, so my opponent has made a 20-20. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just surgically extract something just to take a look at their deck list, see if there's anything interesting I know about, confirm whether or not things like Ren and Six are in the deck. Alright, so my opponent does not have Ren and Six. That's very good to know about. Okay, so my opponent has Force of Vigor, just one Punishing Fire, Elvish Reclaimers, Drop a Pony, Abrupt Decay. Uh, my opponent actually doesn't have that many tools to fight me off. They're leaning incredibly heavy on the combo and Field of the Dead to grind me out. Alright, so... Now that I know a little bit more about my opponent's deck list, we're going to get those Revokers out of here. When I'm on the play, I'm going to bring this other Vial back in, even though my opponent does have Force of Vigor. And then I'll probably just bring one more body in. Well, I know my opponent had two drop of honeys. Two drop of honeys. So maybe two drop of honeys is the point at which I'll relic order. Does my opponent have exploration in the deck? Yeah, so my opponent has four explorations still in their post sideboard configuration and two libraries. Yeah, this is going to be enough hits where I think this is going to be good. I would like to play first. And I'm also going to take a second to mute my phone. Um, we have a solid opening hand with multiple basic planes and a vial to start us off. Uh, it's not the most exciting hand, um, but Brimaz is real hard to answer for my opponent since Drop of Honey doesn't really work against it, in that I get to go and just like create a cat that it'll destroy every turn instead. Opponent super respecting my vials here. 
Uh, so little known trick, lands mana base is actually atrocious. So a lot of times, if you can take out a colored mana source, you completely take them off a of color. That's super punishing, but we have uh, Council's Judgment to get us out of that. Even though we don't have any humans right now, we're going to put this on humans. Um, it being on human is most likely to let us double spell in the future. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I really didn't want them to have that. This turn is tricky. Getting this vial in play ASAP means that it generates the most long-term value which I like, but just jamming Mom and Stoneforge here puts my opponent under a ton of pressure and probably means that I'll just win the game if I top deck a land. I think I'm going to get Sword of Fire Nice. I think it's most much closer than you might imagine between Sword of Fire and Ice and Sword of Truth and Justice. I think either, either one of those things connecting probably starts to spiral the game out of control quickly. Uh, the disaster level draw from my opponent is Tabernacle. I, I need my mana to do stuff right now. Like a tabernacle and then a wasteland the following turn or something like that is, is probably the way that my opponent will steal this game back. My opponent's life from the loam is very slow right now. Ah, shit, this is going to be Tabernacle. Yep, there it is. So this sequence super punishes me for not playing the Aether Vial out. Sequence also means that my mother of runes probably needs to start attacking. Ugh. All right, that was that was about the worst possible turn. So the way Drop of Honey works is if at any given time there are no creatures on the battlefield, you sacrifice Drop of Honey. I 
I think I'm going to put in my Sword with Stoneforge, play my Aether Vial, let my creatures die to drop up honey, and then try to get back in the game with Grimaw's plus sword. Note a Force of Vigor would be the like insult to injury card at this point. Opponent getting an effective 3 for 1 with their crop rotation. Sucks for me. They also get their Mox Diamond back. And they have a land. So, no, Brimaz also super awkward with Tabernacle around. So I, I think I've lost this one at this point. I think I've 100% lost this one at this point. Um, I'm going to need something like Tomic or Rest in Peace basically now. So my opponent is threatening Blast Zone Recursion, Tabernacle Recursion. If they get a Dark Depth, they're just threatening killing me. I'm not going to be able to hold up this Flicker Wisp for another turn cycle. The good news is they probably can't kill my Brahmas. Well, I should say they can't kill my Brimoss quickly. So shields are down. If my opponent has a crop rotation, I'll die. But there's not really much I can do about that. Except play Caracas. That was uh, an insane draw, by the way. I, I might be able to steal this one back. It's going to depend a lot on what my opponent does here. So Blast Zone on three means that Brimaz and Sword of Fire and Ice are going to eat it on my turn. I have to think about this blast zone slash tabernacle combo. It's really strange. Uh, 
We're going to put my stone forge in. And I kind of want to bounce my Brimwaz right now with this trigger on the stack to see if they blow up the blast zone to get the Brimwaz. If they don't, then in my upkeep, I can put in Batter Skull pay for two critters and then like have this Caracas up on my next turn to protect because I, I don't want my Brimaz to die. Permanently. Well, it's not the way that I should phrase that. My opponent cracks the Blast Zone in response to me activating the Caracas. I could get Sword of Truth and Justice with the Stoneforge instead of the Batter Skull. Oh, this is a weird spot. What will you do, opponent? What will you do? They have sniffed out the trap. Mm. My opponent is having some A plus caliber draws that are really mucking with me here. Uh, we will pay for the cat soldier. If I equip the sword, if I try to equip the sword, my opponent will just punishing fire my token. So equipping is unwise. So if my opponent punishing fires this token, they can't blast zone this turn. Which would let me tap out for the Brimaz. Well, not tap out, but you know what I mean. All right, they return the punishing fire. They take out the token. So now, is it correct for me? Okay. So because of this, I can tap out, play Brimaz, go to my end step, Flicker Wisp out the blast zone. and win the game unless my opponent can both wasteland and produce merit lodge in which case i'm at 21 
but Punishing Fire could finish me off. Oh, life is weird. This is one of the most intricate D&T games I've played in a while. This is also one that I will probably rewatch for my own benefit. I've had a lot of really tough decisions that I think I've played well, but there's potential that I could have played some of these better. I hope you're not getting a little bit of static in video. I'm hearing a little bit of crackling. Uh, seven different names? Mother! Oh. <laughs> ah! Okay. All right. God, if that is the thing that cost me this game. Wow. Path to Exile, one-time dealer. Stars of Plowshares. Flicker Wisp. I don't know. Opponent is considering just punishing firing my Flicker Wisp now, which I think is wise. <coughs> What does that do? The opponent can potentially indefinitely block my craters. So I'm going to need to eventually put Sword of Fire and Ice on a cat token so that Brimaz and the cat token represent different threats, but that's going to be hard with Grove Punishing Fire. We're not going to go for any equips here. We're going to try to get a post-combat equip on the cat. Life starts getting real weird if my opponent has like a crop rotation. I don't have it. Please don't have it. Okay. Yes. That's fine. <sighs> I 
Why is my opponent good? Why is my opponent good? They took a little bit of extra damage to make it so that I couldn't get an extra equip to creature that could live through Punishing Fire. Well played, opponent. Well played. So we're going to let my opponent go to their turn, and then I'm going to figure out what to do with this Wasteland. Assume that's... Oh, fuck. Thespian Stage targeting Caracas. I really did not want to blow this Wasteland on the Thespian Stage. I cannot let my opponent have a Caracas, though. So that that, that is what it is. Ah, now you get to see how it feels. Um, I really did want to... get rid of this Field of the Dead. Well, my opponent has lost a land. But they have six different named lands in play, so as long as they play a land, they're going to get at least one zombie. A fetch land would mean they get multiple zombies. I'm somewhat expecting this to just end up being something like get back a wasteland and two other lands, wasteland my Caracas so I can't keep protecting the Brimaz. And like chump block it until they can combo and kill me. All right. So I I need a hot draw this turn, or I I think this one slips away. It doesn't take a lot. But I need, I need something that interacts. I guess that technically counts. So Elvis Reclaimer gets to tutor up the combo. And I can't remove it, so that is occurring. My opponent has a Wasteland in hand for my Caracas. If I attack with the Brimaz... I think my opponent will just chump. But if they don't chump, what happens instead? I kill Elvish Reclaimer and Zombie? Am I ahead if I kill Elvish Reclaimer, play Batterstall? I potentially am. Jeez, this spot is weird. My opponent also has Thespian Stage to copy Caracas, and then I can't disrupt that this turn. So maybe my Brimaz has its days numbered anyway? Man, if this was a paper tournament, <laughs> the number of slow Pele warnings I would have gotten. Alright, I think I'm going to attack in. And then play Batter Skull. I expect my opponent... To just chump block here. But we'll see.
Game is nuts. I could hold up Rashadenport and uh, Caracas to try and play around all this, like, Thespian stage and the combo this exact turn. But I don't think that puts me into a position where I can actually potentially win the game. Whereas playing the Batter Skull will give me life gain outs that I think are going to become relevant. I've kind of given up on the Brimaz being super relevant this game. What? Alright, my opponent has information that I don't. That looks real strange to me. Okay. So my vial is gone. Brimaz can be bounced now. So I need two mana to equip the sword to the germ this turn. I guess I'll pay for the Brimaz. Because having it around later may become relevant. Oh god, what does that do? What does that do? My kingdom for my opponent to dredge into a dark depths. Okay, so I can get rid of the punishing fires as soon as my opponent tries to return it. Which may be what I need to get there. Yeah, okay. Goodbye, Brimaz. We send in the War Machine. Go, Voltron, go. Oh, motherfucker. I didn't anticipate that happening. Yep. Can't surgical it in response because my opponent could just grove it back. Ooh, but my opponent... Ooh. So now I can just surgical that. Uh, assuming that that's still relevant. I think it is still relevant. I'm going to take a new snip here of my opponent's library. Taken a lot of time to think this game. Oh, that is so bad for me. The the zombie horde cometh. 
So now I'll be looking for Mother of Runes to push remaining damage through. Blast Zone represents a long-term problem. My opponent can use their Caracas Thespian stage to get rid of my germ long-term. They also just have six power worth of zombies in play now. Thank you. I don't think I can trade my germ for those zombies until I have another creature that I can equip. God, I love Legacy so much. So in 31 cards, my opponent has three copies of Dark Depths available. I need to find a wasteland for this Field of the Dead, preferably. Um, that's not really great here. So, my opponent making all of these zombies plus tabernacle means that they may realistically be in fear of timing out due to their own tokens. You know, that that tabernacle might eat up 12 seconds of their clock every turn or something like that. So they probably want to find the combo soonish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And now that my opponent has a second field of the dead, oh, they have wasteland their own tabernacle. Right, that's cool. That's going to free up one of my mana. And that one mana being freed up is so relevant here. So Tomic now means I can't get ported anymore. My opponent still has Blast Zone, so Blast Zone might be taking up to two this turn to get rid of Tomic and Rest in Peace. Yep. Oh no, going to three to get rid of the sword. Oh! My opponent has made an error here in haste. I, I really think that was supposed to go to two, and they said oh no in chat as well. Um, that Maze of Ith is problematic. So, um, Maze of Ith actually doesn't do anything with Tomic in play. The Blast Zone 
means that I can't move the sword to Tomic, but I think I can move the batter skull to Tomic. I need to think and make sure that there's nothing that's going to bite me in the butt. My opponent has no cards in hand. There's there's nothing on board. Um, I think we got it, folks. Oh, wait, I'm dumb. That was bad. Sorry, I I was like, oh, my, my stuff can't be targeted. I'm fine. No, I'm just stupid. All right, I, I time walked myself by just tripping myself up there. Okay. So now the blast zone has gone to five for Telmic reasons. Oh, that was so dumb. I should have just played Mirror Crusader that turn. Super punishing. I don't think I need this extra germ body. All right. So now I just flicker out the maze and I have this, right? Let's make sure I'm not stupid again. My opponent has one card in hand. It could be Abrupt Decay. If it was Abrupt Decay, they already would have Abrupt Decay Tomic, though. What a match. That was absolutely insane. Super well played on both sides. Uh, that's magic, folks. That's that's why we're here. <laughs> that's what your support of daily DNT gets you. I hope you enjoyed. I'll be back tomorrow. What a game. <laughs>